I want to invite my friend Iman up, Iman Markland. She's got a testimony to share because she was in a very bad place not too long ago and God did a miracle in her life. If you want to sit down right where you're at, even down here at the front, you can just take a seat. We're going to go right back into worship, but I want you to hear this testimony. Let it stir your faith up for a miracle today. How many of you believe that we serve a miracle working God? You know, I'm a living witness that God can do the impossible when the doctors say that it's impossible. In April of 2007, I was a junior in college. I was studying at Oral Roberts University across the street. I was so excited. Come on, ORU. Come on, VC. Where are my college students at? Come on, I hope this story encourages you along your journey. Because sometimes you go into serving God, you make a decision as a young person to follow after Jesus, and there are times when your faith comes under trial. There are times when you experience things that you don't really understand. And for me, that was April 2007 when I woke up on Easter Sunday and I was coughing up blood in my dorm room. I never had a history of illness. I had never experienced any type of ailments in my body. I was very healthy. I ran track and cross country in high school, very healthy in my lungs. But I began to continue to cough and there were little droplets in my hands. And I went to the ER, I had a friend go with me. And as I went into the doctor's office, they did a CT scan on my lungs. And they say, young lady, you have a very large mass in your left lung and it needs to be removed immediately. So you need to call your parents and figure out what to do, but it's gotta happen quick. So it's either gonna happen in the hospital today or you're gonna go home to Dallas. And so I made that phone call, I called my parents, I said, hey, I don't know what's wrong with me, but something is wrong in my body and I need to come home. I need to have surgery. And so my parents came from Dallas, Texas. They picked me up, left my, my dorm, everything in place. And I went home and I was so discouraged because I remember that there were things that, were God, that God was doing in my life. It seemed like I was on a process of healing in my heart from things that I went through. I was planning to go on a missions trip that summer to share the gospel, and it seemed like everything was put on hold. But I went into that operating room, I told them, please put my Bible next to all of those instruments for surgery, and I trusted that God was with me in the middle of my storm. When my parents come in, couldn't come in, when my friends couldn't be there, I knew that God was a present help in time of trouble. And even in that season, my mom had a dream that I was in a casket. And the enemy had an assignment to take my life. But I went through that surgery. They removed half of my left lung, all the surrounding lymph nodes to remove the cancer from my body. And I had to relearn how to walk, how to talk, how to eat, how to drink. You wouldn't think that that was necessary just going into that surgery, but it was. And I began to practice day after day with my father going down the hall. They said, if you can go from your hospital room down the hall and back, you can go home. And I began to do that. And I began to trust in faith that I would be able to leave the hospital. And I remember the day that I was released, I sat outside of that hospital in a wheelchair and the sun was shining. There were birds chirping and I felt like God, he spared me because there were people that never left that hospital, but he allowed me to move forward. I went back to school that fall and I remember being in the, in the chapel services and I used to sing on the praise and worship team. I used to lift up my voice, but when I went back, I didn't have a voice. I couldn't speak above a whisper. And so I remember standing in the chapel or standing in church and just lifting my hands, tears coming down my face and allowing the posture of my heart to be worshiped when my voice couldn't lift up the praise that I wanted to. But you know what? I found a promise in scripture in Isaiah chapter 40, verse nine. And it says, lift up your voice with strength, lift it up and be not afraid. And when I found that scripture and I found that promise, 
I began to prophesy like we talked about in the song earlier. And I began to say with my little whisper, I will lift up my voice with strength. I will lift it up and be not afraid. And I declared it every day in my dorm, every day going to class, every day. I began to declare it, declare it, and little by little, my miracle began to break forth, and little by little, I would have moments where my voice would break through, and after six months, my voice was restored. And I came here to tell somebody today that we don't just serve a God who will do a single miracle. He'll do miracles on miracles. I'm a witness that April of 2007, it was a time of mourning. It was a time when my parents were concerned. They didn't know if they were going to be burying their daughter. But two years later, in April of 2009, I wasn't walking down a hospital hallway. I was walking down an aisle to get married to my husband, Stefan Marklin. And we talk about miracle on miracles, April of 2011. I was going back into a hospital, not because I was sick, but because God gave me strength to conceive seed, and I gave birth to my daughter, Grace Marklin. We serve a God who will do miracles upon miracles. I don't know what your date is on the calendar that you've been grieving and you've been seeing lack, and you were wondering where God was when you were believing for a miracle to happen a certain way. I'm here to tell you that he will restore what the enemy tried to take, that he will give you back double for your trouble, that he will allow you to see victory when the enemy wanted you to see misery. And I came to the realization that if the enemy was after my voice and he tried to take it, I will lift up my voice with strength. I will lift it up and be not afraid for the rest of my days. I will declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living if you believe God is able to do a miracle in your life. You better lift up a shout of praise in this place because he's worthy of the highest praise. Come on. <laughs>